Hi, I'm Abba Shapiro, I'm, and I'm here with my friend Steve Martin. And we just finished a week of diving and recording a course in underwater videography and photography. In the beautiful St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands. As you see. We're actually standing in a pool right now, though. Which is nice. Yes. So one of the things we worked with this week is this setup of the G16 Canon compact camera and the fantasy housing with the fantasy ecosystem. And it was really nice. I hadn't used this before, and I really like it. We had really high-end cameras. We had some DSLRs that were costing $7,000 with the housing. And then we had some low-end, like, GoPros that were just $400. But this was a nice sweet spot. And first of all, I want to talk about the camera. I really love the G16. I'd use this camera above water. As a matter of fact, I, I, I will. Uh, because it's a great camera. It lets me shoot not just JPEG, but I can shoot camera raw for my photography. And for video, I can shoot up to 1080p, 60 frames per second. Wow, you can shoot 60p out of this little camera. Absolutely, and so it's a solid built camera, and I like the fact that it has a setting for underwater, so if you're actually using some of the presets, it will deal with the, the filtering of the red light, and will compensate for that. Right, so you'll make your images look more neutral and natural, what your eye expects to see underwater instead of this kind of overall exactly. bluish cast. It's a, great, it's a great camera when you mm -hmm. don't step up to a DSLR. As a matter of yeah. fact, price for performance, I'm really impressed by this camera. I'm equally impressed by the housing. Well, what impresses you about the housing? Well, with any kind of a housing for an underwater camera, you need really tight tolerances. And what I love about this is that it goes in easily. So you, can, so you can see it. It very easily goes in. Uh -huh. But I have control over every single one of my buttons, and I have good control. There were some other housings out there that held this camera, and it didn't let me control all the other buttons. And I didn't feel it was that solid. And when I turned knobs, sometimes they connected, sometimes they didn't. So that was the first thing that impressed me. The second thing was it was it uses a double O-ring. And that's going to give me a better seal. Yeah, in fact, let's turn it toward the camera. So you have an O-ring on the inside and inside the door and on the door itself. Exactly. And just as a precautionary thing, if it does get wet inside, there's a sensor, a water sensor, so I know that if I hear that, I'm going to aim that port down so any water falls into the front of the camera and quickly get out of the water. Okay. And well, that's, a nice, that's a nice tight lock. Yeah, it's a simple lock. It's easy to make sure that it's closed. And we took the camera down just like this and mm -hmm. shot both stills and video, and it worked really, really nice. As a matter of fact, if I wanted to, I could use the onboard flash. I'm going to go ahead and I can slide this out. Well, there's a little flash built in right over the A little flash. Range. I can actually allow it to pop up. Isn't that going to create a lot of backscatter? It can create backscatter. And there's a great little attachment. It's a diffuser that I can just put on. I can put this on underwater or above water. And we took some macro shots that were real pretty, you know. So you didn't have feet. any hot spots or a bunch of little floating mirrors around your image? Exactly. I thought this was a pretty clever use of the onboard flash. And if I wanted to, I could just put this back in and now attach a strobe using the fiber optic cables. So you're seeing the fiber optic cables go right here? Exactly. Nice. And as a matter of fact, let's go ahead and show the housing here. The housing, you mean the tray? The tray, yes, we showed the housing. And if you notice, I could set this up a couple of ways. I could put a couple of torches on here. Mm -hmm. if I'm you gonna video lights? Video lights, mm -hmm. torches for those in the European <laughs> market. Mm -hmm. And I could shoot with those, or I could put two strobes on here, and I could actually fire both the strobes so this little here. fiber optic cable just co connects right in here. Exactly. And when I take a picture with the camera, this light is a TTL or an ETTL, depending on the manufacturer. And I have ETTL here. So as I take the picture, it sends a pre-flash out. So it's synchronized perfectly with the shutter. Synchronized perfectly. Sends out a pre-flash, sees what light it needs, and then sends out the flash, all with one click. Oh, that's great. So I got some really beautiful images just with the snap. Now, what I really liked is that I could go down with both a video light. video light and a strobe so I could switch between taking photographs and taking video without having to surface. Nice. I really liked this light, though. I thought, bang for the buck, this video light was great. It lasted for two dives. It was bright enough to shoot underwater. And there were a couple other little things I liked. They have these little arms, and two of the features are the ability to put on either a pink or a red filter. To filter out some of those. Uh... Exactly. When you go under between 15 and 45 feet, it's good to put on a little red filter. Everything will look more neutral, more natural. Neutral. And the reason you have both pink and red is pink is designed for green water. 
and red like the Atlantic more, Ocean. Right, and red for more bluish water. Bluish water, like in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. So that was really nice. In addition to that, we have the dome port. I like the fact that this is all one piece. I didn't have to get a separate piece. I can zoom, work fine here. But if I wanted to make sure that it was fully wide angle, there's actually what's called a wet lens. And it's a dome that you can snap on, so you can really get close to your subject, and you don't have to shoot through as much water. Oh, nice. And if you want to get even sharper macro images, again, you have another adapter here. And why don't you hold that arm so I can snap mm. it off. Now, what's really nice about this unit is if I'm shooting macro and I want to get closer, I can snap this on the front, and it's a wet lens also. It's something I can put on when I'm under the water. And as you can see, you can even screw it on and off. So if I wanted to put a different lens on here, say a, a red filter, I could do that. But I was really happy with the filters that came with the ecosystem that I could just snap on. Well, fantastic. It, well, this looks like a great camera system for a very reasonable amount of money. Yeah, I think bang for the buck and ease of use, I really did like it. And I didn't feel I was compromising on the quality of my image using the G16 camera or with the housing because I had a lot of control and it felt really sturdy. Excellent. So uh, where can they see? If they're interested in looking at this, uh, you can go to fantasy.com and you can look at the website down there. It's a nice camera. Explore all the accessories. It's a great ecosystem. Give it a look.